Miss Angie Bell is my fairy treasures. All right, let me sit down. Okay, so you guys were doing a um, pumpkin topiary. One more. I did another one. I think it was yesterday. The video came out, and it was a painted one. And this is also painted, but we're doing it um, Mackenzie Childs inspired with all of the um, with the checks, the stripes, and some more checks. So I'm super excited. Just accept, just a second. <clears throat> I'm just writing something down here so I don't forget. Um, okay, so this is what we're creating today. So I'm going to show you how you um, create the checks, how you create the stripes, and how you create the small checks on the small pumpkin. And then, um, and all the pieces are from Dollar Tree. Um, all the different pumpkin signs are from Dollar Tree. Um, the flowers are from Dollar Tree. Um, let me turn this around so you guys can see. If you guys want to make this, what you need to buy at Dollar Tree. Okay. And I can show you this way. My camera, make sure I'm in frame. Okay, this sign right here. What it comes on is something is like this. It comes here. I broke I, I broke it off of here. And then you just have to trim the end a little bit to make it nice and smooth. But it comes on, so this comes on and it's like that, okay? The other one, this is a wooden sign, just a uh, one of those wooden signs that you, that, that you can paint. That's that one. And then the last one is this pumpkin sign here that says thankful and blessed. And what I did is I found three different sizes so we can make that pumpkin topiary. Okay, and it doesn't have to be these three. You may have you may have some signs from last year. You might have bought some other signs, and it'll work. Those are the three that I found that worked. But there may be there's other ones, or there might be stuff in your stash that you have that can work also. Okay, and you guys, there's we well, saw the pictures before this, and then there'll be pictures after too, so you can um, get like a better view of this. So this is what we're going for to make. Okay, I'm so excited. I love it. Okay, let me put this down somewhere. Just a second. Okay. Oh, one other thing I want to show you that we're going to... Um, well, I'll show you that afterwards. We also are going... I'm going to show you guys um, chestnuts. Painted chestnuts, Mackenzie Child style. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. Well, actually, I'll just show you right now. Um, this is the... Yeah, there we go. I got so much going on, you guys. Sorry. Okay, this is the Mackenzie Child's Inspired Chestnut. You get these at Dollar Tree. Aren't these fabulous, you guys? So, I did the checks. I think it came out so cute. And there's a hole here at the top, so you can put the... Um, your um, string back through there um, if you want to. Um, you can also take this and just add it to like a fall little, you know, decor setup that you have going on. However you want to do it. But isn't that so cute to do the chestnut like this, like the Mackenzie Child style? It's so cute. And then here's another one that I went ahead and already put um, the gesso on, which I use uh, Kills. Kills is a wall primer you buy at Home Depot. K-I-L-Z, you buy it by the gallon. It's about $15 a gallon or $7, $8 a quart. You can buy it at Walmart, Hobbs, uh, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. Okay. I use that instead of gesso, but you can also use gesso. Isn't that so cute, you guys? Do these for the chestnuts. I also bought a few extra because I want to do pink and white because I do a, a pink and white shabby sheet Christmas, and I want to do these for Christmas, too. Because I think chestnuts are great for Christmas, too. Okay, they're just a wintry type of um, little nut, I think. Okay, so we have our three different sizes here. The small, the medium, and the large. So we're going to start out with the large one. Everything has already been um, gessoed, which I use Kills. It's a wall primer, like I said. And um, so that's all been done. And I put two coats of that on. Two coats seems to cover everything pretty well. Okay, let me make sure that we're in 
really good frame. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna use some painter's tape. Now, if you don't have painter's tape, and this is the three quarter inch painter's tape, I think. Yeah, I think that's about what this is. Three quarters inch painter's tape. If you don't have painter's tape, you can use the regular like beige masking tape and just um, so it's not too sticky, um, just like put it on your pants and just go like, you know, just go like this a few times to get some of the stickiness off or to pull your paint off. Also, let your paint dry if you can overnight once you put your two coats on or at least like three or four hours. If you live like where I live, you can put it in the heat. It's 104, 105 here. It's done in 15 minutes. So just make sure it's nice and dry. Okay, so let's begin. Um, I'm going to start here in the middle. And what I like to do in the middle is go wherever there's like a, um, wherever there's like a stem or something here or a pouring spout, I like to try to get in the middle of that. Then it balances everything else out. I think you'll know what I mean once I start. But I always start in the middle and work my way out. And the McKenzie, McKenzie, McKenzie style, McKenzie child style is not about perfection. In fact, you put imperfections in the work, which we'll get to that part later. So even if you do this and you um, mess up a little bit in your lines, you take a, a fine point magic Sharpie marker, um, don't worry. It'll add to the whimsical effect. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top of the pumpkin here. See how I got off a little bit? You're still gonna be fine by getting off. Okay, now you have to make sure that you remove both pieces of tape and move them over. If you don't remove both pieces of tape and move them over, um, you're gonna end up with, um, don't, you, you're, you'll end up, your lines will get all messed up. So here we go. And then when you take the tape off, make sure you hold the tape um, before you rip it off or it just curls up on itself. You'll do it a couple times and then you won't do it anymore because it's very annoying when it curls up on itself and then you have to unwind it. Okay. So we're making, oh, and the reason I'm doubling up the tape is because I want to make these fatter lines. Um, if you have tape, that's this wide you don't have to double it up but I don't have tape this wide and for the small pumpkin I don't double it up I only use one piece of tape to make the lines so I want to make smaller checks so so I'm gonna finish this up here and then I'll turn I'll pause the camera and we'll finish up the lines on the other side for the sake of the time of the video. So let me just finish this one. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up here on this side so you can understand where we're going to. So we finished up from the middle out here. So now we're going to go from the middle out the other way. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video, finish these lines up, and then we'll start doing our ones across, okay? So I will see you guys back in just a minute. Okay, you guys, we're back. So I finished that out 
and now I have the tape going this way, going across. So I set the tape, the tape in the middle. I start it in the middle again. That's how I always like to work with this is in the middle. All right, I'm going to turn this because you also see me turn it for a second because um, I have to be at the right angle. I may have to get up for a second and go get a different pen. I think I do. I think my pen's wearing out. Yeah, it sure is. All right, you guys. I'll be right back. Let me pause you. I got to get another pen. Be right back. All right, you guys. I'm back. Oh my God, it feels so much nicer having a pen that works. Okay, did I mark this side yet? No. No, it's marking this side. And this is the only time that you mark both sides of the tape. This is the first time. After that, it's just the one side. You have to move the tape every time, both pieces. Or if you have, if you have wide enough tape, you only have to move the one piece. But um, I was going somewhere with that, and I forgot. Anyway, move the tape, line it up again. And line the tape up again. And this is what I mean. You only have to do one side. That line's already there, right? So you only have to do a line on this side. And this gets you your, your checkerboard. Or that McKinsey style. I'm loving the McKinsey checks. I do it on everything. I've done I've done mushrooms. I did these little uh, ceramic pictures you got from Dollar Tree. They said like farmhouse and stuff on them. I did a couple of those. I've done mugs. I want to do a teapot, so I'm getting ready to do that. Or tea kettle. I like to do a teapot also. I've done quite a few things. I love it. Okay. Now, you can look at the top here and see that the checks on this side and this side are not going to be completely even, and that's fine. It's those imperfections that make your work um, look whimsical and hand done. straight across here okay perfect so I know some people are thinking well how do you know if everything's even I don't worry about everything being even it doesn't need to be perfectly even it needs to look like it's hand done okay the Mackenzie Childs also puts like I said puts little inclusions in the work um, so you're always good. It takes the pressure off too, but you don't have to be perfect. I'm going to do my lines going straight across here. So those will be painted too. Now, actually it doesn't even matter about any of this part here from this line all the way up because, um, I'm going to have another pumpkin sitting right on top of here, but if you were if you were to um, maybe just use this without you making it into a pumpkin topiary, you would need to know how to finish this off, right? Okay. So I'm going to line up this here, and then I'll do this part off camera. For the sake and the length of this video, because we've got two other pumpkins to do, right? 
So what I'll do is I I'll always do like half of it, do the other half off camera so that, you know, the video doesn't take forever. Okay, so let me pause you guys and we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, we finished up the lines. Okay, so the lines are all the way down. Let me just bring this here. And I want to show you guys something. The reason also that it didn't end up even on both sides, because this pumpkin's not even. Look how this, the pumpkin goes like, this is the shape of the pumpkin. So you can only do your lines the shape of the pumpkin. Same thing with down here. This one goes, goes down further and not as far here. But I don't care. I mean, that's the way this pumpkin was cut, so whatever okay so we need to do our checks right so the first checks we need to start out are right here at the top okay um white black white black white black white oh we have to really start right here white black white black so actually right here even when there's a little small little space like right here i don't know if you guys can see it count that as as whatever you want it to be black or white whichever one you want to start out with i want to start with white because that's going to be white black white black so i want this piece here to be black so there's white this is going to be black hopefully you guys are understanding what the heck i'm saying and if you don't quite understand what i'm saying the main thing is you're doing white black white black and when you start doing work like this you'll understand the little things if you don't understand what I'm saying no major that's white so this is black I'm using I love the shape of this brush usually I like pointed ends this is kind of pointed but that's the shape of this brush okay and isn't it gorgeous look at that these are I call them unicorn brushes or mermaid brushes you get them in the um Oh, where you buy your uh, acrylic paints, your cheapy, crafty acrylic paints. On that aisle at Hobby Lobby, they have these paint brushes. And you get a pack of like five or you get a pack of like ten. So a pack of ten is, I think, probably like eight or ten is like ten dollars, but I use a coupon. And then a pack of like five or six is like around five dollars. Again, you can use a coupon. There was a girl who said that she found them on clearance at one time. You know how Hobby Lobby does their clearances in January usually? Well, the clearances are still going. Um, I think because of COVID, they got behind on marking things down. So it's awesome. They're still marking stuff down. But I never saw these on clearance. I've only been able to buy them. I, buy them. I was buying them like a lot. Every time I went in, I would use my coupon on on these brushes so I have all different I have all kinds and it's two, they have two different designs see so I guess these are unicorn and these are mermaid love them okay so um, right here that's what even that little tiny space is white so this needs to be black and then this is white because there's black and above it okay if you don't count those little tiny little spaces right there of what that should be that's white, it, you'll get off. And if you happen to, you know, get off on your pattern, no major, you guys, just take a little white paint and um, fix it, no major. And what we're using as the white, obviously I, did, I told you I did two coats of the um, either gesso or kills, and that's what you're using for your white. So you're priming it, your wood, and at the same time, you're putting the white base down that you need, so. And any cheapy acrylic paint, I get my, usually, even though I have all brands, but a lot of times I get my acrylic paints for like 50 cents. Maybe it might be a little cheaper than that, but around 50 cents from Walmart. In the craft section. It's their apple barrel.
And you guys, I cannot tell you how relaxing just painting checks is. I think I like that feeling of doing something simply over and over and over, which is why I like knitting. Because I get to do I get to do a stitch and I'm doing it over and over and over. I think it relaxes me. You know how they say doing something repetitive relaxes you? I mean, it may not relax everybody. Maybe doing something repetitive for some people would drive them nuts. I'm not really sure, but for me, it's relaxing. And this lady told me, she said on one of the comments, she said, I like watching you paint. It just looks relaxing. She was always getting relaxed just watching you paint those checks. I'm like, yeah. It is relaxing. In this today's crazy world, we need some... We need some downtime. We need to be able to relax. This place, this world has just gone absolutely insane. We need to be able to come in our craft rooms, escape the world, and paint some checks. I've got some other surprises of things I'm going to paint checks on that from Dollar Tree. That's going to be really cool. I haven't seen anybody else do it yet, so. I better hurry and get it done before somebody thinks of it. <laughs> just kidding. I don't care if somebody else thinks of it. We're all just having fun. Okay, so I'm going to paint one more row, and then I'll do the rest of it off camera, Okay. Um, this needs to be black because that needs to be white because there's black above, right? And I'm working a little bit far out, so I hope that's okay. Um, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, so. And it's not, I mean, it's not like super small and detailed, so. I'm painting an entire square black, so you should be able to see well. If you haven't seen my video, I did a three-tiered tray, and um, I used, um, for the tiers, I used uh, pizza pans from Dollar Tree. And the reason I use pizza pan is because it doesn't have that lip that interrupts the space in the center, so you can put more stuff on a tray. Because a lot of people are using the chargers, but I think the chargers, they have that lip on them, and the circle in the center... You don't get to, it, it interrupts being able to, um, gives you a smaller space to be able to, you know, put all your little cute stuff in your three-tier tray. So that's why I like the uh, pizza pans at Dollar Tree to make those. So I'll try to make sure I put that video um, at the end. And I did uh, the McKenzie checks on that. And she likes to mix, McKenzie checks, she likes to mix the checks like on one tier flowers and then checks and then flowers. She mixes checks and flowers together. It's really cool. Even when she sets like a dinner table, she'll have a charger that's uh, checks and then she'll have a dinner plate with flowers. And on top of that, put another salad plate that's checks. It's really cool. I love it. I also want to paint some, um, I bought some chargers to paint too. To put checks on those it'll be fun I think it'll look cool to set a table with the sunflower plates that I have with the checks for the um, for the charger since you don't eat off the charger and then maybe do a um, a dinner plate of sunflowers on top of that and then on top of that um, 
do a plate with checks that you paint yourself, but you don't eat on that one. It's just decorative. That'd be kind of cool. Okay. So we're not going to keep painting, painting checks because we need to, we're going to let these dry. Um, we're going to let this dry. Um, we'll come back and I won't do this on camera below here. I'll do that off camera, but we're going to come back to these checks because we need to, after they dry, we need to put some inclusions. We need to put some white inclusions and then some gold inclusions on the white part, which you'll understand when we get there. Okay. So let me rinse my brush. Okay. And we're going to let this dry. Okay. Put that behind me. Okay, let's go for the next piece. The next piece is going to be um, stripes. So, yeah, the next piece is going to be stripes. And let me make sure we're still there and everything's good. Yes, we are. Okay. So, to make the stripes, we want the stripes to be um, as wide as two pieces of tape. I'm just looking below to make sure I got that right. Okay. So, like I said, I like to really line myself up either with or in between if there's a stem or a spout up here. So let me kind of see if I'm lining this up right. No, I'm not. So let's go about right here. That's good. Like right now, if there's a little bit of space in between there, that's fine. But see how that's kind of lining up in the center of the of that little um, little thing here. Oh my god, I can't believe I can't think of the name of it. Who cares? Okay, so now let's go ahead and make our line, make our um, stripes. And the stripes are just so easy and so quick. I don't always start like this, but I feel it's easier if you just come towards yourself because then you can see what you're doing. If you're going away, you can't see uh, what you're doing. So if you just start like right here and come to yourself and come to yourself, and it's easier. Okay, line this up here. And I do have my pumpkin um, diagonal. Well, no, let's not do it like that, just so I don't confuse you guys when I'm applying the tape. But once I have to draw these lines, I have to turn this. Okay. Well, let me tilt it a little bit so I can do this. Oh, you know what? I just did this wrong. I do want the stripes to be um, just one tape. Sorry, I just kind of messed up. So, okay, let me just show you. So I don't want them that wide. We just want to do one piece of tape. So I'm gonna divide this stripe in half and I'll make it'll make more sense in a second. So I'm gonna divide this stripe in half. By putting lining this up. Sorry about that, I have a little brain fart. Okay, see how now they're they're one. I'm gonna divide this big one up in half by just putting it right on this line. When I was doing this yesterday, I first started out with big stripes and I'm like, you know what? Let's just do the stripe with one piece of tape. That's how wide we want it. Just one piece of tape, the length of one piece of tape. Okay. All right. 
right, sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. Okay, so like that. So we're only gonna use one piece of tape. We're not gonna use the second piece. I'm just filling the line in here. Okay. And it's not gonna matter if your lines are perfect or not. Like if your lines are a little thicker or thinner here and there from your tracing, it's not going to matter. See how I just did that, how I didn't hold it? I'll use my other piece of tape that I have over here already ready to go. You gotta make sure you hold on to it. And then this will be the last stripe and then I'll um, go ahead and finish it off camera and we'll come back and the stripes will all be done and I'll show you how to start painting some in. And as I was doing these lines and even your checks, you know what, I first start the line going this way and then I start bringing everything in. It's weird because you don't really think about what you're doing until you make the video and then you're like, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so go, let me go ahead and pause it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the lines on this side and then we'll be back, okay? Okay, you guys, so we are back with all the stripes done, okay? So let's do some stripes. Um, let's start out with black. We'll start with black and then white. So these are just so simple. You're just doing black and white stripes from here. So we'll do some together. You guys, this is so easy, but so effective. It just looks so cool. So on the bottom, on our very bottom pump, on our largest pumpkin, we're gonna have checks, then we're gonna have stripes, and then we're gonna have checks again. But the checks on the smallest pumpkin are gonna be really small checks. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do those ones too. Because on this, for the small checks, just like this, you only use one piece of tape. There's no rule about how big to make your checks or to make your stripes or whatever. This is just how I decided to do it. And I think it worked out good, so. It looks right. I think, anyway. You may be like, girl, that looks like hell. But, I like it. And that's the most important thing is for you to do it how you like it. Maybe you don't want the stripes to be the size of one strip of tape. Maybe you want wider stripes. You could do that. Maybe you don't want black and white checks. You want white and pink checks, which I'm getting ready to do some white and pink check stuff soon because I have a shabby chic Christmas that I do. It's a pink shabby chic Christmas. So I'll be doing the McKinsey checks in the pink and white, a lot of them. 
in just a few weeks I'm done doing all my fall DIYs I'll be doing some Christmas DIYs Make sure that I'm in frame. Okay. Again, painting these, um, again, painting these checks is just not checks, these are stripes. <laughs> Painting these strokes are just so relaxing. But whoever thought of like painting checks and stripes on your pumpkin? Now, I'm sure there are, I'm sh you know what, actually I'm sure Mackenzie Childs is. I'm sure she has all kinds of pumpkins with stripes and checks. I just didn't happen to see them for this project, but after I made that other topiary, I was like, oh, I have to do that. And so this is my um, second set do of doing this. So I'm excited because now I'll have a set to decorate with. I think tomorrow I'll go back to Dollar Tree, which, you know, I need to go to Dollar Tree like I need to be home the head. I'm so behind on haul videos. But I'd like to um, grab a couple more of um, the different size pumpkins because I know I'd like to make some more of these um, and maybe not even right now make them like by next summer again at this time I'll already be ahead and I can do some more topiaries and some more pumpkins Okay, so we'll do one more stripe and then we'll finish the rest of the stripes off camera. I don't know why it's so satisfying to paint these, but it's satisfying, it's relaxing. Well, I guess I said why. I really enjoy doing like just repetitive things like this. And things that I don't really have to think about. That's one reason I like collage. When I do mixed media, I always have a collage background collage is always in my background because I love things like this where it's just repetitive you don't have to really think a lot you know I like it Guys, sorry for getting quiet on you. Isn't that so flipping cute, you guys? Look at that. A striped pumpkin. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to let this um, dry. We're not going to finish this on camera. We're going to let these dry. We'll th I'll show you how to do some inclusions. And I'll show you how to do inclusions on one of the pumpkins. We're not going to go back and do inclusions on all these. We'll probably go back to the largest pumpkin and do the inclusions on that. 
And if you don't know what inclusions are, you'll know in a minute. So, okay, so that's how you're going to treat your mid-sized pumpkin. Oh, hopefully I didn't mess that up. Okay, and now we have our smallest, our little baby. Okay, so we're only going to use one piece of tape to make the stripes. You know what? I need to put my paintbrush in some water. Okay. So, to make these little checks, that's what we want is the small checks now. I have something on here. Oh, I should be ripping that off. That's showing up there. If you can get this ripped off, you can. It doesn't really, because you could actually use that in something else. It doesn't really interrupt in anything, but whatever. Okay. So I like to start in the middle, like I told you. And as always, I gotta turn my pumpkin. Start up first and then bring the lines to it. If your first line doesn't go up, it, 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 when you do your first line up, it gives you a line to go back to each time. If it doesn't make sense, I hope that you're watching me and that's what's making it make sense. Okay. I even like drawing all these lines and making the checks. I think that's fun too. Because again, it's that repetitive, it's that repetitive thing over and over and over. And you guys, this is such a, an effective but simple thing. Also, this would be good for your kids to do. They have guidance with the tape and it can come out really cute. They can do all any colors that they want to do. And can they have little pumpkins for their room? Or big pumpkins, where they can make the whole thing and make it a topiary. Whatever they want to do. And we're gonna go ahead and finish this out on camera because um, it's so small, it goes so quick. We can just go ahead and do all the, finish this up. You know that tape wanted to roll up on me? Okay. Let's see where this where this tape lands at if it's yeah, this will be perfect. The way this is working out is that last stripe will be here and that'll start my stripe here for the pumpkin for the top. I'm gonna just, with my own way, just put one more right here. And you're gonna ask me, well, what if it's not perfectly straight? Who cares? That's that McKenzie check style. It looks hand done. That's what you're going for. Okay, so now we need to do, we need to go the other way, right? Okay. So I'm going to go below that line because at the top on my stem, that's what this is called, a stem. It's going to be, um, it's going to be um, stripes there. So we want to go in the middle of this stem. Okay, that's what I like to do. Seems to line things up well. I can tear some of this off. It's getting on my nerves. 
Okay, so here we go. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna put stripes. Is this wait a second? Is this yeah, it's straight up down. Okay, I'm just turning my pumpkin because you guys know I need to be at the right angle. So on this one, we want to make little small checks because it's a small little pumpkin, right? So there we go. We're starting to make those small little checks. And I'm staying below this line because here I'm just going to have stripes at the top for the stem. You can do it however you want, but I just felt like it was the easiest way to go about it. Um, not trying to make little checks on the stem, but you can do as you wish. You guys know me with my project with anything I like to do there's always more than one way to do it always take creative license to do it the way you want I do I get ideas from people <coughs> like these uh, topiaries um, I got the idea from Olivia I should have mentioned that already Olivia's romantic home she painted the pumpkins, and I did that yesterday to make them look like, you know, really cool looking pumpkins. And then she made them into topiaries. Um, and then I thought, so I did that, but then I thought about, oh, I should do Mackenzie Checks. And if you don't know who Mackenzie Childs is, um, look, uh, Google it, and you'll see all of her work. She does tea kettles, teapots, plates, and she mixes, uh, she does things in checks, and she does things in flowers. And then she mixes flowers and checks together. When she sets tables or she has stuff in the kitchen or decor. Also, she's on Shop HQ and they set up an entire kitchen of Mackenzie Child's everything. It is so magical looking. I absolutely love watching the show. The last time I was on there, they had a really good special. Basically, it was $100 for one of her tea kettles. You know, the ones that you put on the stove to warm up your, your hot water. Her tea, she has a three quart and a four quart. The three quart is 125, the four quart is 150. <laughs> I know, but I've always wanted one. And I'm like, I'm not spending $150 on a damn tea kettle. But I said, if I could ever get one for $100. So what happened? She had one for $100. It was a three quart and two of the uh, coffee cups or tea cups, all in checks. I was, oh, I could not, I could not uh, call fast enough. I was like, oh, heck yeah. So excited. So I got it. I love it. I use that tea kettle every day, every morning to um, boil water for my tea. And I make a thing called pour over coffee, even though I have just a brand new coffee pot that I love. That's, I have one pink one and I have a teal one. I still make this thing called pour over coffee. And I'll have to show you guys that sometime. I use a Dollar Tree type of glass cylinder jar that goes out like that i'll have to make pour over coffee once for you guys i think it's delicious it's very old-fashioned it's the way they used to make coffee before we had all this other fancy stuff okay so see we're making all these little small checks isn't this so cool love it That was stupid. See that tape rolled up on me. There we go. Okay. Let's see if we have room for one more for one more check or not. Yep, we do.
Okay. So now we're done with that tape because we have all of our checks and stripes for the stem. So let me make sure. Awesome. Okay, so now we need to get our paintbrush out again and we need to paint. Rinse and dry my brush. I'm not going to paint the stems yet because I got to see what this is going to be here first before I do that. Um, we have this here is white. There's a little tiny piece right here that's white. So leave that white, black, white, black, white. Okay, so this is white. This is going to be black here. When I talk about the little, the little corner right here that's white, you will see what I'm talking about when you do that. Count that as either a black or a white space. And it doesn't matter if you start with black or if you start with white, you guys. And again, we're not going to paint this whole thing. We'll just paint this one row so you guys can see me doing it. And then after this, I'm going to go back to the original piece that we did, the big one, and I'm going to show you what inclusions are. And then I'll show you how to, we'll go back to the original piece and you'll understand how everything's put together. And if you go out of the lines a little bit, don't try to keep correcting it. Don't worry about it. Going out of the lines a little bit is perfect. That's an inclusion. If you see any McKenzie's uh, checks, uh, McKenzie checks, McKenzie child pieces, she oh, they, they their lines their their squares aren't perfect. They go out of the lines all the time, and it adds that whimsical hand touch. See how that little piece right here is white? You want it to re remain white. You don't want to fill that in because you're white. That little piece there, black white black white black white black and ended in white so right here I wanted to see what was going to be above here so we're going to definitely make this black because it's white right there so we'll make this white and we'll leave that stem at the top white I'm considering maybe taking that stem and um, putting some lines going this way. That would be really cool. So just keep that in mind. If you end up like this, you might want to take it and go like this. It takes some lines and just do it by hand. And then paint those black, white, black, white, black, white. I think it would add a little extra whimsy to it, but it's it's wet right now. So just keep that in mind. Um, so that is it for this. So you fill in all the spots like that, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to do inclusions. We're almost done with this video, you guys. So let me put this down on the ground. Grab my original piece. Okay, so here's my original piece back. Now we need to do some inclusions, right? Let me get rid of this black paint that's sitting here because we don't need that here. One thing that's going to happen when I have black paint sitting around like that is I'm going to get my hand in it or my piece in it. So just a second. That's the only thing that's going to happen with that. A mess. I hate wasting. You guys probably saw me putting that, some of the paint back in the jar. I always do that. I don't like to waste the paint. Okay. So, let's do some inclusions. Uh, we'll do white inclusions first. I like to do inclusions with a stiff paintbrush like this. Okay. 
it's really, really stiff. You always think, where are you going to get those stiff paintbrushes? Well, these make great, I'll show you. Um, you just need some white acrylic paint. Let me wet this brush a little bit. You can also use a fan brush, depending on the size of the checks, but you could have used a fan brush also. Because a fan brush will give you that same, that same look. So, load the brush up, but wipe some of it off, because you don't want too much paint on here. And these are what inclusions are, is what I'm talking about. Just like this. And make sure you hit them from all different areas, so that nothing's looking the same. Like I always hit some come here, coming, some coming from here, some coming from that side. There we go. Go one right in the middle there. And this one come here and we'll do one like that on there. Okay. So that's the white inclusions. Is that simple or what? And look how effective it is. Okay. Now she always has these ones that look kind of orangey, goldy, yellowy. Well, we're going to use gold. We're going to use this dazzling metallics gold called splendid gold. It doesn't have to be this exact gold. Just look for some gold in your stash. But if you want the exact one, here it is. And you get it at Walmart right next to the apple barrel paints. Okay. Okay. But, you know, we're all crafters, so most of us are that are watching this, so you probably have gold in your stash of some sort. Okay, I'm taking this brush again. This right here, that's the, that's the shape of that brush. And um, dipping it in the gold. And then, again, you just want to just hit it in different areas like this. I don't know if they, I think they paint them in, but I think they want it to look like, um, like when they did the firing of like their ceramics that these inclusions showed up. I think I'll have to listen to her the next time she's on shop HQ. See how I'm being just kind of whimsical about where I put put these little inclusions at? And there's going to be an inclusion here because this is going to be white, right? So let's just go like that. So that's it for the inclusions. Simple, simple, simple. Seemed like it was going to be a whole bigger idea than that. But that's what really brings, makes it very whimsical is to put those, those inclusions in there. And it's also why it doesn't matter that if your lines aren't perfect, if you know, if you go out of the lines, because look what you're doing, you're going to go back and put more little mistakes in your work. That's all an inclusion is, little mistakes, which are not really mistakes. I call it going back and putting whimsy in. So let's call it that because that's what makes your piece look special. Okay, so let me clean this up. And I'm going to show you about putting all these pieces together and what you use. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so let me put this down. On the ground. Let me grab my other piece if I can grab it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so when you take all three pieces and you finish all three pieces, this is what it looks like, right? If I can move this up, love it. Okay, let's make sure you guys are seeing. See, on this one, I did it like this. See, on the stem. So it kind of depends on how things end up. Okay, so get get original when it comes to your little stem. Anyway, this is how you glue all your pieces together. You have your big piece. This piece gets glued on top on the top of this one, pretty much right below the stem. And then this one, right below the stem, the small one get, goes onto the mid piece. I, um, make sure when you glue that you glue with E6000. For Use your E6000 first. 
Then go back and use your hot glue in certain spots to give instant adhesion and give more of a hold for your E6000 to work. That's what I do. So I first do E6000 and then I go in just little certain spots and put hot glue just to hold everything. And you're really holding down your E6000 so everything gets glued down really well. So you have the instant adhesion with the hot glue, but for over time and for strength, you have the E6000. You get this at Walmart also. You get this in the craft section. Same area that you get the craft paints. Okay? Um, and you put all those pieces together. Now, the flowers, these flowers right here, I'll have to come apart. Okay, you can buy a whole, you can buy a whole stem of flowers like this. Okay, this is just one of them, but you can buy the whole stem at Dollar Tree. You, these are the orangey type of sunflowers. You can also, have, I could have used the yellowy sunflowers. I could have used those too. And then what you want to do is um, cut, I, this has hot glue on the back. Cut that little piece off the back that's going to be on there, that little green stem. Now, they're going to want to fall apart after that, right? So take some hot glue, hot glue this, hot glue this back on top. And then, so these are hot glued together, right? Now, this to go back onto here, it needs to be cut off. So what I do is I cut, take my Tim Holtz, doesn't matter what scissors, cut that off. Then I take hot glue on here, put, put it on here. And since you're gluing to fabric, hot glue is going to be just perfect. It's going to stick. Even though it's plastic, you're doing plastic to fabric or whatever this is, um, it'll stay glued on. So do that to all your flowers so that um, everything is hot glued together. And so then what you're going to do, you're going to take one of the flowers here at the bottom. So what you're doing is you're putting them at the bottom between each pumpkin. So right here where these two pumpkins come together, a flower. Where these two pumpkins come together, I put two flowers. And at the very bottom, I put three flowers, three of these sunflowers. You can do whatever you want when it comes to decorating it like this. But that was my idea. And I really liked how this orangey, yellowy sunflower, mostly orange, looked with these uh, black checks. I thought it looked really good. So you guys, this is it. I hope you guys like this. I hope you've been inspired to do some Mackenzie child's inspired um pumpkin topiaries that was a that was a mouthful let me just go like this make sure you guys are seeing that yeah so make sure you guys are seeing everything now there'll be there were pictures at the beginning you saw and there'll be pictures at the end so you can get a better look full view of the whole thing and you know in my decor setting um you'll get a full view um and that's it, you guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, any comments or questions, leave below. Share my video if you'd like. Um, and I want to end my videos like this. You guys, do something nice for someone today. In this crazy world, we really need to be doing that for each other. Also, always remember, my friend, we are more alike than we are not. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you guys next video. Bye!